The most basic of knots is the overhand and double overhand knots. You will create a loop and then just pass the end through. These are generally used for tying items together or tying off the end of a rope. To create a double overhand, you're simply going to make another loop on top of the first one and pass the end through again. The slip knot is used for a wide variety of different tasks. To tie a slip knot, simply make a loop and then pass a loop through it without pulling the end all the way through. This means that when you pull on both ends, it'll come out. Slip knots are the basis of some other knots, and I like to bind up my cordage in this way by making one slip knot and then passing the end through over and over and over until I have what's called a daisy chain. This makes binding up cords really easy and very clean so they don't get tangled in your pack. Two half hitches is useful for making a loop that slides. To tie two half hitches, wrap the rope around behind the end and then around in front of the end and then pass it through the loop. You're essentially just tying two overhand knots and this will slide back and forth as you see here. The surgeon's knot is very similar to the overhand double overhand. You're simply going to pass the end through twice instead of once. This creates more friction and means the items will hold together instead of coming apart as you create the second knot to hold them together. The square knot is used to bind two ends of a rope together. Side of the, you're going to take the right side of the rope and pass it over the left and then put, pass you're going to take the right side of the rope, put it over the left, and then pass the end through the loop. Then put the left side of the rope over the right and pass that through the loop. Then pull it tight. The figure of eight knot is used for climbing and for binding two ropes together. So you're going to create a loop, wrap the rope around, and then go through the back of the loop. To make a figure of eight loop, you're essentially just going to take the other end of the rope and follow the first knot around. As you see, you're just taking the second rope, passing it around and through just like you did for the first figure of eight. You're just following it around. Now this creates a loop and this is what you're going to tie into your harness for climbing. The double figure of eight loop is generally used for binding two ends of a rope together. You're going to do the exact same thing you did for the figure of eight loop, except you're going to do it in the opposite direction. So you're feeding one end through um, in the opposite direction that the other rope that you tied the original knot in, as you see here. And this creates a very strong bond between the two ropes. A bowline knot is used to make a solid loop that will not slip. You're going to create a loop, then go through the front, around the body of the rope, and then back through the loop, then pull it tight. This can take a few tries. It can also be tied like this. Create a loop, pass the end through like you would for a slip knot, and then take the end of the rope feed it through, and then pull it through, just like so. This is a little easier to remember. The Alpine Butterfly Loop is used to create a solid loop in the middle of a rope. Create a loop, and then twist that loop in the same direction so you have two loops, as you see here. You're then going to pull this down, across, and you're going to get something that looks like an Egyptian hieroglyph. Then pull that th down through the bottom and go through the eye of the hieroglyph and pull it tight. You now have the alpine butterfly loop. The double sheet bend is used for binding two ropes of dissimilar diameters together. Begin by making a loop in your larger rope. Take your smaller rope and pass it through the loop. Then go around, back under the smaller rope, around and back under the smaller rope a second time. You're then going to pull it tight.
The trucker's hitch is used for ridge lines or for tightening a rope that already is attached at one end. To tie the trucker's hitch, and you're going to create a slip knot, just like so. Then take the end of the rope around the second object, pass the end back through the slip knot. Now pull the end back towards the object you are tying it to, pinch the ends together, and tie a second slip knot around it to secure the end. A fisherman's knot is used to bind two ends of a rope together. First, tie an overhand knot and pass the other end of the rope through the knot. And then pull it tight. Take the second end and tie, you tie an overhand knot around the first rope. And then pull them together. This is also adjustable, so it's what I use for my bushcraft necklaces, as you can see. The clove hitch is used to bind a rope to an object. Begin tying it by wrapping the rope twice around the object you're tying it to, to form an X pattern. Then pinch the center of the X and pass the end through. Pull it tight, and you'll be surprised at the amount of friction that is created. This is very tough not to untie. This knot is also used to tie bags shut, um, and is sometimes called a constrictor knot. And now you're just a little bit smarter. It, these are fun if you're sitting watching television or in the middle of class, and it really helps to tie these over and over and over until it's just muscle memory. You should learn how to tie them behind your back, in the dark, with gloves on, because at some point you may need to use them in those conditions. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, remember to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content. But for now, that's all I have for you today, guys. Archer out.